Okay, thank you. It's a pleasure to speak here. Uh, so I will talk about deep algebra. This is the uh, my, one of my research programs in understanding text and in understanding especially mathematical text. Uh, so I should explain that my background is pure mathematics. I did uh, my PhD in mathematics in Paris. Then I was a research fellow at Oxford for two years. Uh, and basically right now I'm working at the Polish Academy of Sciences where I'm a assistant professor. And apart from that, I have my own company, Ulam AI, where we do this kind of research on the verge of mathematics and computer science. So what I will be talking about is uh, kind of a program and I will try to promote that program uh, for you to join me in helping me out because I need developers. And there's like low hanging fruits in terms of like what you can do uh, and get really nice re publishable results and papers. Uh, so let me start with, uh, I will assume that you know less about mathematics than computer science, so I will explain you how it's going with mathematical research nowadays. Uh, and what are the ma problems within mathematics? So there's a growing number of mathematical research uh, published on archive. So this is a repository which you probably know because computer science papers also appear on archive. And the problem with mathematics is that it becomes more complicated and interdependent, and it's impossible to verify the correctness for the outsider. So you really have to have the knowledge related to the particular domain in order to be able to say uh, that a given proof is correct or not. And even though there still are problems, even for a group of experts, and one of the problem, the, the recent problem is that there's a proof of one of the well-known con well conjecture, ABC conjecture, which was done last year by Mochizuki, which has like uh, 1,500 pages, which is 1,500 pages long, and actually there's no one who can verify its correctness. So you would like to somehow be able to say that the given proof is correct or not, and this is the starting point. Uh, this is the official stats on, on um, archive or of how many papers there are. And if you look at pure mathematics, it's uh, around 20,000 submissions per year of mathematical papers. And each mathematical paper contains at least one main theorem. So there are at least 20,000 theorems with proofs on archive every year, and it's growing. Uh, so that's problematic because uh, you have to verify all that, and mostly the, the, research is the research is done, but then you have to send it to a journal to have a peer review process, and then that takes also a lot of time. So uh, the potential solution to that is uh, automation or semi-automation of producing mathematics and verifying already existing mathematics so that it's, it's all consistent and uh, and, and that you, you can, in, in the end, that would serve also a community of mathematicians to produce better results, uh, to, to produce knowledge faster. Uh, so what, what's being done currently, and there's some, some kind of research going on already for, I guess, at least 20 years, prior to any machine learning. So what people used to do is that uh, they take a mathematical work, so for example, there's this, uh, Phi Thompson theorem, which is uh, you might be aware of, uh, or like the classification of simple groups, and then they rewrite it in a uh, in another language, uh, Coq Mizar, which is especially custom to process mathematics, and it's somehow in between uh, natural language, the, the language in which mathematicians write their papers, and something which a machine can understand. Uh, and once they rewrite, then try to verify it by, by using in, inner logic of uh, Coq, Miser, or other interactive theorem prover. So if, you, if you're interested in that, you can go for this reference, the developments, uh, informal proofs, and, and read more. Uh, the only problem with that approach is that uh, mathematical work is based on uh, previous works, so you have to lay foundations basically each time you, you start something, do, doing something. So, so it's similar to like the understanding the usual text. Even though the sentence can be very simple, you have the background knowledge that you have to understand in order to understand the text. Uh, with mathematics, it's easier because, because you can mostly chase all the references to pre previous works, but still, if you are trying to translate that into one of those languages, 
uh, you have to get all the references right, and you, you, you have to build a foundation. So there were some solutions like this Miser Math Library, where they try to set like a standard for like the, the common knowledge. Uh, that, that's working to some extent. But the problem is that there's a tedious work of filling in gaps, because human way of writing mathematics is often much different from what Cock or Miser accepts, because uh, there are gaps, there are like simplifications, there are things which are obvious to the experts but not to the machine, and it's purely manual work. So, uh, okay, yeah, so, so for example, it took basically six years for 15 mathematicians to translate 100 pages long paper. And, and that's unsustainable in the, in the longer run because the mathematics, as I said, there are like 20,000 submissions each year of mathematical papers, so you won't be a able to go together with the, the newest developments in order to analyze everything. And you have to do some, some, some kind of automation to, to follow. Uh, but once you are in Koch and Miser, there are a growing number of methods to actually verify correctness. Uh, so, so hammers and tactics, I won't talk about those. This is very related to the research done in, in those fields of uh, formal verification. And there's some, some trials with machine and deep learning, but basically there's only one paper so far on this topic. This is the paper you see at the bottom uh, by those uh, five people, uh, deep math, these deep and most of those people are from uh, Google. And, and they tried with something very simple, and they got, uh, they got already interesting results. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm taking this last perspective and, and trying to think what you can do with machine learning and deep learning if you were to apply it to mathematical texts and try to really understand the text. So my whole idea is that mathematical texts are much simpler than general texts because you, can, you, you don't have these grammar issues. You, you just have a pure text uh, of logical sentences, and you basically want to conclude whether from A and B, you c whether A and B implies C. So, so, so that's very s simple in terms of um, grammar issues, but you only have lo pure logic that you have to understand. Uh, OK, but first of all, if you want go going towards automation, then of course you need data for any kind of machine deep learning. Uh, so, so and, and you need to have a lot of data to do anything meaningful. So in particular, you're, you, you don't you, you can't do experiments on this translated mathematics into Koch or Miser because that takes too much of the time. So you have to invent something else and try to automate translation. So, so my way of thinking is somehow to omit the, what was done before and just view mathematics as any kind of natural language and just uh, try to... So, so, so that, that was my previous way of thinking about it, that I, I take a a mathematical paper in LaTeX, and then I try to translate it into Koch or Miser, where I can verify actually proof. But you can think, maybe you know, like other uh, proof assistants, or like uh, something where you can check logic. Uh, the whole idea is that you actually treat mathematics as another language, where you can, uh, and you're trying to build a dictionary between the two languages. Uh, so, so what I mean by, by building a dictionary is uh, if you know semantic parsers and how NLP uh, is done, then you're trying to enhance that with uh, something uh, which appears only in mathematics. Namely, you would like to, have, uh, you'd like to be able to distinguish between different level, level of abstraction. Uh, so I, I introduced those terms of types and variables, which are semantic types for those who know type theory. Uh, so, so the example is this, so a, a typical sentence you may find in a mathematical paper is let G be a group, those dollar signs are for uh, LaTeX, and in this, uh, in this example, G is a variable of type group. So, so types are abstractions and variables are like particular realization of a, of a given abstraction. And the, the whole idea is that you would like to build a graph of knowledge uh, of your mathematical text first, by tagging your text in a very, uh, in, in like on a higher level. So apart from tagging it like in a normal way by you know like tokenizing, uh, you, you somehow would like to add also different levels of abstraction and create this graph of knowledge on a side, uh, and then only translate it to Koch and Miser and um, sentence by sentence and and get 
additional f uh, structure where you can, um, which you can verify. So there's a reference of uh, uh, this uh, PhD thesis uh, of uh, Ganesh Salingam, uh, the language of mathematics, where he looks at the mathematics from, from the standpoint of, like, of natural language. Uh, ah, so before that, OK, so anyway, even though, so, so this is the architecture or approach that I'm taking, but you still need a good source of data to actually try it on. And in particular, uh, you would like to have uh, data which is known to be correct in the sense that already verified by, by mathematicians, so peer reviewed and big enough to do something meaningful with it. Uh, so, so that's where algebraic geometry comes in. So that's my specialty in mathematics. That's why it's close to my heart. Uh, but also, apart from that, it's like it's, it's very pure domain of mathematics, and it's very well researched. Uh, in particular, uh, the, so, so it's abstract in the sense that it's mostly based on concepts and not on like different kinds of approximations, and it's easier for computer to process because it's processing at the level of words rather than numbers. So, so you have very little numbers, uh, numbers mostly symbols, which you have to process. Uh, which is which is easier to uh, to deal with, and also it has a very good foundation, uh, especially this Stacks project that I mentioned. So this is my basically main source of uh, our data from mathematics, which we use. Uh, so let me explain that. So the Stacks project is a uh, open collaboration of multiple mathematicians, uh, starting from scratch, meaning from from simple algebra, from simple category theory and going to the modern research. And it, it's very well organized, uh, easy to manage. You have all these dependency graphs of uh, which theorem follows from which, uh, which we can experiment with. And it's verified. You know, it's verified uh, for correctness. So, so you, you can use it freely. Uh, and this is not even accurate. So the, the Stacks project, I write that it has 5,700 pages, but it has over 6,000 uh, 6, pages right now. You have API to query. Everything is in tech. You can access all of the tech files. It's available free on the internet. And that's the fantastic source of uh, free good mathematics to use and experiment on. And this is what we're experimenting with. Mm. So how does it look like? It's basically like uh, you have a lemma. Uh, each lemma has a lemma or proposition, theorem, whatever, has a tag, which is uh, immutable. And then you have a proof, and you can also access dependency graphs, which are on the right, uh, which shows basically, uh, so your, your lemma is in the, in, in the middle of the circle, and then all the lines are showing which other lemmas are you using, and that goes basically back to the, the axioms that you have. So the fantastic thing about the Stacks project is that it's all the references are inner uh, and are, are uh, within the Stacks project, so you don't have to go and read like another free papers outside of the Stacks project. Everything is uh, in there. So that's a great source for like uh, if you're trying to reason upon text because everything is going down to the to the single 6,000 uh, pages document. Uh, yeah, this is another view on that. Mm. Uh, also because you, you can like have these clusters. Uh, so, so basically, yeah, uh, so, so the goal, this is on the, on the next slide. The goal is that uh, we want to enhance the semantic parsers with types and variables and build so, some kind of structure like that from scratch and then be able to use that also on other mathematical papers, but not only mathematics. So you somehow, the, the way I think about understanding text is somehow that you would like to create this graph of knowledge um, and see different kind of uh, types, variables, and how different concepts interact with each other, uh, and how one concept is implied by the other concept. So you'd like to s create this kind of dependency graphs also for other scientific papers, and not only scientific papers, but, but any paper, actually. Uh, so, so this is somehow uh, the basic plan. Uh, of, of, of the whole program, and then you, you know, like the, the Stacks project, and then you test and verify it on the archive. Uh, so let me go to machine learning part and then say something about like probably what you, what you want to hear, so LSTMs and stuff like that. Um, 
so, so there, this is from another side. So one of the parts of uh, what I was talking about is this logical part, but machine learning is mostly, well, it, it is statistics. So you're not getting anything on the nose, you're getting something statistically true. So you have this amazing uh, character level LSTMs, which you can use to actually learn the style of the text. Uh, and it, it, it was tested on the Stacks project by Karpati. So, so you have this great reference. This, uh, uh, he posted an article on a blog. Uh, two years ago on uh, effectiveness of uh, recurrent neural networks. And that was one of the examples, there are plenty others. But actually what he did was he trained uh, this character level LSTMs on the Stacks project and then he tried to uh, see what it get generated and actually generated a tech, uh, doc document which almost compiled in LaTeX and it looked like algebraic geometry. So this is the, the result. So it, it, it looks basically exactly like, in, like, like a random page from the Stacks project, meaning you have some kind of a theorem, then you have some kind of a proof, you have, as you see, you have like lemma, you assume something, but when you try to read it, uh, it actually doesn't make sense. Uh, <laughs> it's, it, it looks nice, it looks like mathematics, but it's not mathematics in the sense that uh, it's, it's only mathematics on the level of how it looks, but there's no logic in between. It's, so, uh, it, it, there's no logic in it. So, so for example, like you see proof, see discussion of sheets of seats, sets. So, so th that doesn't make sense. Uh, but uh, like if, if you just start reading it, it doesn't make sense even now. Uh, so the problem is how to actually do something with it because wh whether you can somehow enhance it with inner logic to actually be able to really make sense out of it and uh, start producing real mathematics and actually at least try verifying mathematics uh, to some level. And this is the idea behind Metatech. So uh, the, the whole idea is that you would like to have language on top of a, a standard tech, which uh, has inherent logic to it and is able to say that a given sentence is correct to some extent. Uh, so this is basically what we're trying to do. So on one hand, okay, uh, uh, yeah, th this is the idea, build a logical structure on top of tech, and um, we want to somehow attach a probability to a given sentence uh, which shows how true it is, and uh, then be able to learn uh, upon examples to distinguish between fake and true sentent sentences. Uh, okay, maybe omit those couple of things, uh, and okay, j just stay here. So, so at the moment what we have is that we're experimenting both, like we have two ends. One end is uh, purely statistical methods like word to vec and you try to different statistics on the, on the text and trying to see. So, so we're basically building this graph of knowledge, trying to tag every sentence uh, and then see what are the correlations and whether what we, we can see that these implications between different terms, different mathematical abstractions uh, on the text. And the other, the other approach is purely rule-based, meaning that we're looking for sentences, for example, in a text like, like, let x be blah, blah, blah. Then we know that this blah, blah, blah is actually a mathematical um, abstraction, mathematical term, which we would like to connect to other abstractions. So, so uh, but, but this is something more based. And we try to connect the two views to, to get the results, and we have like very, say, humble results so far. Uh, the whole problem is that you, you want to, the, the, like, machine learning is statistical, and you want to have something which is more than statistical. You want to have this logic uh, input to it, and it's very hard to do. So uh, just like a, a one of the last comments uh, is that uh, I'm, I'm very open for collaboration. This is not the program for like the next six months. It's uh, more like a research program for the next 10 years, basically. And I think like 10 years, you, you probably get something meaningful. Uh, at this point, we're just trying differ different stuff that, that we're doing. The code is available, like we have some code available publicly on GitHub. Uh, if you want to know more, then you can uh, write me, okay, uh, yeah, what, I, what I'm skip you can write me at the email I give you. Uh, I'm skipping this because uh, this is more of uh, how, how the meta text should work, but this is more from the mathematical perspective. So, uh, <laughs> um, uh, like, I, I don't want to get into, like, 
type fewer and stuff like that. Uh, in the end, I just uh, tell you quickly that you know the, you, you should have somehow a library of the facts that you want to verify that are already verified, and then be able to. Um, you, if you get the, you, you take the input, you tag it smartly, uh, and then you uh, try to use the logic on it to verify whether a given fact is uh, compliant with the, what you have already in the library. But this is purely on the level of uh, ideas currently, and we are far from it. Uh, so what we have is that we, we're trying with this character RNS and then doing something else. So, but the whole idea is that you probably can do something like um, was done in the uh, AlphaGo paper, uh, meaning that if you treat mathematics as a game, then you're trying to uh, win the game by giving a proof. And the way you do it, you uh, the, the tree itself is too large to actually be able to go through directly. So recall that by proving a theorem, you tr you're trying to give a, a fact after a fact after a fact that it, uh, that it follows from a given sentence. But uh, the problem is that the, the tree itself uh, is growing too, too, too large, so we'd, we'd like to have some kind of intuition. And, and this is the kind of, so the whole idea is actually similar to what was done in the first implementation of AlphaGo, where you have both value and policy networks. So, so uh, but yeah, so, so this is how, how to, to what we are uh, going into. So thank you for your attention. If you want to contact me, write me, and there's plenty of things to, to be done together. Thank you. Thank you, Przemek. Uh, questions regarding Metatech or fake mathematics? Do you have any source for negative examples to train your your model that verifies the uh, the correctness? You you have to have both correct and incorrect. Ah, uh, no, we're mostly doing well. I can give you some incorrect also, but we were training on correct mathematics so far because it's uh, yeah. But I, yeah, I, I see what you mean. Yeah. One more. Okay, so thank you, Przemek, for thank your you. talk. Thank you for coming and big applause, please. <laughs>